three proven tips to have a healthier Halloween. Would you agree that this holiday is typically full of candy, full of sugar? And while some of that in moderation is not so bad, a lot of it all at once filling up these bags and getting shoved into mouths is not helpful. Would you agree with that? I am just curious because <laughs> today I want to share with you a couple of the things that I do in my family so that we can have a healthier Halloween. If that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. Inflammation, lose weight, keep it off, and just grow in confidence through a healthy lifestyle. So I've got some tips for you busy mamas today for how to make this Halloween be a lot healthier. And the first one is what you can put in the bag. All right, so the first one is offer some non-candy items as prizes. Let's see what we have in here, some ideas for you. Foam toys, stickers. They're like these little puffy stickers, can you tell? These are boy themed because I got boys. All right, but these are fabulous and I bought these in a big pack. You can uh, separate them as you can see here. I had to borrow a used one for my boys. But anyways, they're a big pack and you can put these into the bag as a prize. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, Play-Doh works really well as a non-sugar idea of prizes. Bouncy balls work great. These are awesome. My boys love these. The big ones especially, not expensive either, okay? Ooh, what else we got in here? Oh, oh, two more things, okay? These are like they're stuck together, okay. Because one of them is balloons, which are actually really fun for kids to blow up as they're out and about trick-or-treating. Gives them something to do with their hands other than shove candy in their mouth. And these are the best. Do you guys know about these? These sticky, you've seen sticky hands, sticky frogs. These, this just happens to be a sticky lizard. I know it looks like a, a gummy worm, but it's not. You know what I mean? These little sticky ones? Hint for you, if you do give these out, put them in little Ziploc bags first. And that way the child can put it in their bag um, and, not, and it won't get sticky like this one is right now. Okay, so those are a couple things you can do for non-sugar items to fill up these uh, Happy Halloween bags. Okay, that is the first tip. So let me know if which one of those is helpful for you. I'll show them to you one more time as I put them back in my bag. We've got Play-Doh. We've got balloons. We've got bouncy balls. We've got this sticky lizard guy, sticky hands, anything like that. We've got stickers. And last but not least, we have foam toys. Any of these can be purchased at a very inexpensive cost. I'm, I'm a big believer in being thoughtful with money. So things like the dollar store, Amazon, you know, those are your friends for these kinds of things, okay? So that is tip number one for how you can have a healthier Halloween is to do some kind of non-candy option. And you know what's cool? Even if you do, if you go trick-or-treating or if you do a, a scavenger hunt, like a candy scavenger hunt, and you have prizes in there, you know what the kids end up playing with more after they shove the candy in their mouth? They end up playing with the prizes more. So you're kind of giving them a toy that's gonna last a lot longer than like a Reese's or something, although I love Reese's. So speaking of Reese's, let's go on to point number two. Point number two is have a small portion. Okay, so use this idea, just kind of cup your hands like that for a small portion. I believe in moderation. I do not believe in deprivation or dieting or anything like that. And I believe that it is possible to live a healthy lifestyle with a lot of moderation and a lot of substitution. So I'm giving you substitute ideas today for what you can do instead of candy. And my second idea is it's okay to have a small portion of candy. Let me say that again, because I know a lot of you are not think like I don't normally say this because I'm a health person, but I want you to know it's actually part of what we do. We have moderation. So it's okay to have a small portion. And when I say small portion, I mean like three pieces of candy. Okay, so here's that as the second point. By the way, go ahead and drop some emojis down below. This is helpful for you. First point was the non-sugar items and what you can do. The second one is to have a small portion. For us and our family, literally, that means three pieces of candy. And I do think that that's helpful for kids because then they kind of choose. And you know, if they want to have three big pieces, fine. You know, if they want to have three small pieces, fine. The point is, is it helps them to choose, hmm, which one do I really want? And then they don't eat everything along the way of their trick-or-treating. They just pick the ones that they want the most. And you know what, quick side note, isn't that a cool life skill, right? Like, isn't it cool to, to know how to make choices like that and even a, a little delayed gratification? That's not something 
um, that a lot of kids can have an opportunity, but if we give them an opportunity to practice that, you'd be surprised. Kids really rise to the expectation of the day, you know? And if you say, hey, we're gonna do something new this year for our family, we're gonna test out, you know, giving, if you're, depending on where you're coming from. If you're coming from eating piles of candy, don't, don't do three. <laughs> Maybe do like five <laughs> or something. But the idea is just give them that expectation ahead. I'm seeing a little technical difficulty. Hope that's still working. Okay, and the last thing, tip number three is actually, I kind of went from out to in. I gave you the, the three tips of the candy tips, what you can do instead of candy. I told you about the small portion and now I'm gonna tell you about what you can do in your mind. It's kind of a little tricky mindset thing here because I believe that that really makes all the difference in the world, which is why I saved it for number three. Okay, ready? Is set the expectation. Number three is set the expectation. For yourself, have a conversation ahead of time with your kids, with your nieces and nephews, with your grandkids. And, and get on the same page, because you know what's helpful is when adults and children alike understand what's happening, and they have an expectation of, oh, hey, this is what we're gonna do this year. And so some one of the things we do with our boys is that I will have an expectation and remind them, hey guys, we're gonna get three pieces of candy this year, so pick them wisely and make sure you really like them, okay? It's an expectation ahead of time. And you know what we do? Nothing different than any other day of the year. We eat before we go trick-or-treating. We drink water before we go trick-or-treating. Uh, we've been active during the day. Personally, I will do my exercise that morning just like any other day. Make sure that you are fuel your body before you go and bring water with you. Um, if you have like a big water bottle you could bring with you, that way when you're out and about and you're kind of wanting to munch, because that happens, right? A lot of times your body's just thirsty. You can actually drink water um, instead of the candy as part of the whole setting the expectation. You know what? I'm just gonna have some moderation this year and not eat an entire bag of candy. Maybe I'll just have three or five pieces instead, okay? So I hope that these tips have been helpful for you.